Spiral Dial Sci-Fi with a Soundscape The sour smell of urine filled her nose. It was pitch black. The cat's protests became more and more intense. Her mouth felt dry, tongue like sandpaper against her teeth. A cat's tongue. Where was she? A name popped into her head. Finn, the ship's cat they had rescued from the secret laboratory so long ago. Her finger throbbed at the memory of her evening with the mysterious computer testing her blood, taking her DNA, measuring the length of her telomeres, the only protection her body's cells had against an early grave. Testing her, but for what? The air tasted different somehow, moist, Could she be back in the lab? She moved her arms and legs experimentally. She lay on a cold, hard surface. It felt like bare concrete. There was a puddle of liquid underneath her left foot. She pushed onwards, nothing. Her last waking memory had been of floating upwards, hugging a giant bubble of molten rock as the earth itself erupted which meant that now she must be above ground. But if so, why this silence? Sister, a thin voice whispered. Pyrope, where are you? She looked around her for any flicker of light from the mineral spirit, but there was none. Reaching out into the concrete, she tried to travel into the rock, but. It felt foreign somehow, fuzzy. It would not let her in. I can't see your light. No energy left, Pyrope said, her voice seemed thinner, as if it might fail at any moment. Where are we, Pyrope? What's happening? I told you, they pushed too hard. Who pushed too hard? The dust people. Her voice cracked. A picture of Archie and Morven atop a giant octopus appeared in her mind's eye. What on earth had been going on? I remember an octopus and an ammonite. Yes, octopus. We are in his realm now. The floor beneath her lurched in an unpleasant manner. She felt sick to her stomach. But motion reminded her of something. Back on the ship. Pyro, do you mean that we are back at sea? On the ship, yes, but not back. Always on the ship. But we were underground, how's that even possible? Pyro started wheezing and coughing piteously. (coughs) Pyro, what's wrong? Earth needs to touch the earth. No earth. And Pyro dies. Die? But you're a mineral. How could a mineral die? Pyrope only whimpered in response. Jessica, a fully qualified doctor, was not trained in resuscitating rocks. What to do? Pyrope was sarcastic for sure, but she was her one link to the mysterious subterranean world. Jessica would have to think of something. Earth. She needed to touch the earth. Jessica must find a rock. There were rocks on board, she knew that. She remembered the ammonite-shaped desk in the captain's study. She could take Pyro up there. She pushed herself to her feet. Everything seemed to hurt as her eyes accustomed themselves to the gloom. She could make out the faintest sliver of light, the outline of a door. Where are you, Pyro? There are rocks on board. I can take you there. There came only the very faintest of breaths in response. Jessica dropped onto her hands and knees and listened intently, crawling toward the sound. 
There came only the very faintest of breaths in response. Jessica dropped onto her hands and knees and listened intently, crawling towards the sound. Her right elbow splashed into another puddle, releasing an acrid smell. She tried not to think too hard about what it might be. She felt a metal object with her left hand. Pyrope's cage. I've got you. Hang on. She lifted it and jumped to her feet. That's better, Pyrope said, voice returning to normal. On no account must you put me down. I won't survive on my own in this horrible, damp place. Wait, I thought you needed to touch the earth. You are one with the earth now, sister. As long as I am with you, I am safe, but you must release me from my cage. The captain must not know that we are together. How do I do that? Orvin has the key, Pyrope said, quickly before the captain finds us. Jessica walked to the door, placing her feet carefully to avoid splashing herself. As she pushed it, another piteous meow sounded directly into her left ear. Finn! She reached upwards, another cage. She could feel his wet nose pushing against her hands between the bars. I'll get you out of here, I promise. Feeling along the sides of the cage, she located the door and gave it a good yank. It came open easily in her hands and soon afterwards she found herself with a purring ball of fur on her left shoulder. Ow! Stop that! Finn's claws dug into her skin. She was pretty sure he was drawing blood. The sound of footsteps came towards her from the corridor. Louder and louder they became. A thrill of fear ran down her spine. Finn fell silent as if he sensed danger. She drew back from the door and prepared herself. Sister, Pyrope said, release me. I need the key. If you can let that creature out of its cage without a key, you can most definitely open mine, the mineral said. Jessica tried it. To her surprise, the cage came open at the first try. She felt a tingle run up her right arm all the way to the back of her neck, where it stayed. That tickles. Stop it. She reached back to scratch, but the tingling sensation only moved away from her fingers. Be quiet, Pyrope said. They are coming. She was right. Jessica could hear someone pacing right outside the door. There was no time to hide. The door opened. A gust of wind hit her full in the face. So strong she staggered backwards. And the light? The light was so bright she could scarcely see. She fell to her knees, clutching Finn to her as the door slammed shut. The wind echoed in the silence. Or was it? She could hear the faintest whisper of breath in and out, in and out, faster and higher than her own panicked breath. She was not alone.